So I wish I could fully explain this. I said I can't. Uh, I can give you my thoughts on it and, and my guesses about what's, you know, what plans we're getting at. I think I have some handle on it, but but there's some questions um, that the answers to which uh, definitely elude me. But uh, one one of the questions is where do we find in our experience an experience of the necessity of death? Uh, that maybe we can put in brackets for the moment. But it's definitely uh, a certain claim is being made here about the connection between our awareness or our coming to an awareness of the necessity of death and um, this notion of the death of the other, but not simply the other, the death of the friend, the death of the neighbor, the death of the loved one. That, that these two things are, are very closely connected. Um, he says in the top page 201, the awareness of the necessity of death is only provoked by participation, by the personal love in which the whole experience is bathed. That's why I just said that. We only become aware, according to Landsberg, of death's necessity because of love, because of our participation in the being and also the death of, of the loved one. He continues there on the top page 201, we constituted a we with the dying man, and it is through this we, through the very strength of this community, this being together, not just being an individual, but being together with another individual, which I guess is love in a way, I'm going to extrapolate a theory of love from what Landsberg says. Through the very strength of this community, which constitutes, as it were, a new order of persons, that we are led into an experiential knowledge of our own mortality. Quite something, actually, there. Uh, so, love is necessary for knowledge. Again, referring back to what he's just described, the experience of the death of the loved one, he says, for a moment we have our feet in the land of the dead. A moment later we are once more outside the kingdom of Shep. But during that moment we experience its bitter cold, and no one is quite the same after he has felt it. Quite a large claim being made here for the significance of the experience of, de of the death of the other, of the loved one, of the friend. Uh, empathetically, we experience death ourselves, but em as, as empathy. Now, how strong really is this claim? Can we really experience death through our so-called participation in the death of the other? I think that's a very hard question that we really need to ask Lansberg. Whether this phenomenon of the death of the other and my empathy, my participation in it, is simply a psychological matter of my own feelings or whether it really reveals something about mortality and my own mortality and about death itself. That's a question we really have to ask Landsberg. And, and again, I think it's the difference between saying that we observe the death of others and that we experience in, in an empathetic way, uh, in a communal way, the death of the other. He is certainly, I think, making the latter claim. Uh, and I, I, I would refer to what he says on the top, page 202. My community with this person seems shattered, but the community was to some degree myself. And to this degree, I experienced death in the very core of my own existence. That's a very strong claim here. Uh, it, one may say that if we take it at face value, what he's claiming is that ontologically, in terms of what I am, my being, part of me, literally, is my community with the other person, and upon the death of the other person, this community is shattered and vanished. So part of me goes with the person, which is something that we say, uh, certainly, metaphorically or not. I don't think that Landsberg can simply mean it metaphorically. I think it means literally that part of me goes, part of me dies. I experience death along with the other I don't think you could ever make the claim that I have the full experience of death. I don't. I'm alive. But I've come to a knowledge of death through my participation in the death of the other and the 
feelings that he says of solitude and loss and absence to follow upon the shattering of the community that I had with the dead person. Uh, back to the, uh, the sense of, or the uh, subject of the necessity of death and where it emerges. Uh, go back to page 201, the second paragraph. I think this is a very important point and, and, and goes to the earlier discussion of the menace of death, when death actually becomes something truly formidable. Says the sense of the necessity of death, which is in cause here, is not identical with the sense of a general statement of necessity. It is not, excuse me, which allots any one form of death to any one of our species. The necessity is chiefly related to those whom we love and to ourselves. This sphere within which we are really aware of the threat of death is surrounded by a vague, obscure horizon filled with other human figures, real and possible. Future that that seems to be pretty important. That um, our sense of the threat of death uh, is uh, associated with love in the sense that we presumably love ourselves, and there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, there are others whom we have this community with, whom we love, and the threat is to that. The threat again is not to the species; it's not to the organism. You might say that it's a threat to the realized personhood that we are aware of in ourselves and our loved ones. That, that is, I think, if you were to expand on what he means by love, love can only happen between individuals, real love. Uh, the, the sense of com communion, that the so-called clan consciousness, the hypothetical earlier state of, of human consciousness, that doesn't allow for love, the, the feeling of deep attachment and, and, and one's personality being submerged in the, the group doesn't allow for the meeting of two individuals and, and the kind of communion that can develop between two personalities, two unique selves. Uh, that, that could only happen. Love in that sense, in the fullest sense, can only happen uh, between persons. Uh, and we, we presume that every human being is or is potentially that person, but we couldn't possibly realize it, become aware of it, become truly experienced the unique individuality of every human being that is more or less restricted to ourselves and our loved ones. Uh, so the threat, death as annihilation, death as threat, death as menace, uh, is to that person which would explain why there's this sphere that death is threatening, and that is ourselves and our loved ones, because we are aware of our own individuality, we are aware of the individuality, the personhood of, of those loved ones. So um, this experience of their death, of the death of this other, there's crucially not simply the other, but the neighbor or the loved one, the friend, is our uh, perhaps Landsberg big contribution here? That is that it's the it's the shattering of that community with that person, in which we become aware of our own mortality in the deepest sense, because literally we die. Uh, whether we want to soften that to some degree and say metaphorically a part of us dies or a part of us goes away, but I think he, in the strongest possible interpretation of what he's saying, literally we die along with the person at least temporarily. We have our feet in the land of the dead, and we are never the same afterwards. <coughs> uh, so yes, this is a this is, a, this is why I gave you two talks on this. This is a this section four seems to be the key section, key contribution. We haven't quite answered all our questions, have we, about necessity of death? How do we how do we come to know that? Um, how do we actually do we actually experience death, or is this a psychological empathy with the other? Certainly, Landsberg thinks it's more than that. Uh, one more point uh, here. 
section about the necessity of death, which I think has to be noted here, uh, perhaps it's developed a little bit more later on, that we find that the necessity that he's coming up with is, he says on page 201, the general necessity here is not of a logical, but rather of a symbolic nature. Now, that's not really absolutely clear. Maybe that's something we need to think about. How can a necessity, which seems to be a primarily a logical category, be reinterpreted as a symbolic? I have a few thoughts about that, uh, perhaps, in, in a later talk, where it, uh, it may become clearer in later sections what Landsberg has to say. But, but what, what is a symbolic necessity rather than logical necessity? 